So in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can get our API off our computer and put it to a live server. So one way that we can deploy our Python applications, in this case, our Django applications, is to use a service called Heroku now. Heroku allows us to create an application and then we can upload our code to Heroku by using Git and then Heroku takes care of serving our application and they give us more insights on what's happening in our applications. Now, Heroku is free for starters. So by default, you can get your application on Heroku without actually paying money. But if your application is going to scale and demand more resources, then you're going to have to upgrade a, your Heroku plan. So be sure to log in to Heroku and over here you will find apps. If it's your first time, you want to find any app, so go ahead and click create app. So I'm going to click create app. Okay, so it's available. Now you can go ahead and create the app. You'll see an option like add to pipeline. So this is the way that Heroku allows you to manage different environments. So if you want a specific version of your deployment, let's say you want specific changes to be in staging, other changes to be in development, other changes to be in production. You can do that through pipelines, but we won't be getting into that right now. So let's go ahead and create our app. So when this is done, then it's gonna go ahead and create it. Now you would see that there are different ways we can uh, connect our, our code to Heroku. One is through the Heroku CLI, one is through the GitHub, one is through GitHub. So the one I prefer most here is GitHub. And that's because with Heroku, you can set it up in a way that every time you make new pushes to GitHub, Heroku goes ahead to automatically deploy your new changes. So that's cool. Now we are going to select GitHub. That means we're going to need to have a GitHub project. So I'm going to come over here to my GitHub and also create a project. So github.com. Then you want to go to new. So over here, then we can create a new project. I'm going to give you the same name just so we have uh, <laughs> a consistent app. It's the same app anyway. So you want to go ahead and create the repository. So once you create this, now you can come to, to Heroku and down here to connect, you can search for your repository. So I'm gonna click search and you can see that they have discovered it. So you want to click connect. So once you have it connected, we are unable to access the connected repository. Either it's empty, which is true. Anyway, it's, it's now connected. So what we want to do is we push code to it. So I'm gonna copy the default commands that they give us here to be able to push to it. And then on my local computer, I can paste these commands down here. And then it's gonna make a push. The initial push is gonna be pushing under the readme file and not any of the Django code. And now, once you, if I refresh here, we should have the readme at least. Now you can see we have the readme. So to push the other piece of code, there are some things you're going to first need to do first. One is we don't want to be pushing our secret key to GitHub or anywhere else. So I'm gonna move that and then I'm gonna create an environment file. So here I'm gonna create a .m file. Then I'm gonna have a secret key. So we can define we can define environment variables by using export. So we can do export secret. And then we can set it to a value. So I'm gonna remove this, just make sure it's uh, we need to update our environment to know about this file. So we can do that by doing source.env. So now that we have that, instead of us using this key here, then we can go ahead and use the one in the environment. So I'm going to import OS here. So import OS. And then here we do environ, get, then the key. So the key here is going to be separate key. That's the one we want to have here. And once we are done with that, there are some other considerations we need to, to do, like turn this to false if we are in production, which we should do here. Another thing we need to do here is allow specify allowed hosts. Now, allowed hosts basically describe which domains should serve your application. So if you're going to have an your API be served on myapi.com, that's what you wanna have here. So for now, what I'm gonna do is, is uh, just put a wildcard to enable it to be served anywhere. The other things we need to set up is a way to serve our static assets. Now Django doesn't st serve static assets by default. You know, they give us this static files app and this doesn't serve our static assets in production. So they leave that one to us to manage it. Now there are several ways you can manage it. You can integrate 
a service like S3 to manage your static assets. So we have other solutions like white noise that allow you to serve your, serve your static files directly from your Django application. So that's what we're going to be using. You can come over here on white noise and you read about why people are motivated to even make this project. So I'm going to come over here and install that because we want our documentation to be shown even when we deploy to, to Heroku. So once we have that, we need to add a middleware for it. So I'm gonna copy this line here. Then we take that to, we take that to our middleware. So on the second line, we will have this line added. So once we are done with that, if we wanted to set up caching for files, we would go ahead and add this. But right now our application is really simple. And now to configure Heroku to deploy our Django applications, we are going to be using this module called Django Heroku. So to make this work, what we need to do is we need to import it here in our settings. So anywhere in here. And then we need to run Django Heroku settings. So that's gonna tell Heroku to know how to handle things like static assets, to know how to set up your databases and all that stuff. So I'm gonna come over here. And this is gonna enable Heroku to pick up these settings that we defined here. So it's gonna know how to work with the databases, how to work with static assets. So once we have this, then we can go ahead. By the way, we need to install Django Heroku, we didn't. So let me just come over here, run this installation. Because it's gonna be needed for it to work. So we also are going to use a server that's gonna serve our application. So by default, whenever we are running locally, we have a development server that Django sets up. But that's not really efficient. It can only do as good as helping us to develop. So we're going to install gunicorn. So over here, I'm going to do pip install gunicorn. So when it's done installing, then we want to define a proc file. Now a proc file is a special file that Heroku uses to know how to do specific things when it is deploying our application. So over here, I'm going to create a file called proc file. So you can see that it has the Heroku badge in there. So over here, I'm going to bring in this piece of code now. Now what this basically means is whenever Heroku is going to have our application, we want it to run this command. So we want it to run gunicorn, and then we give it a path to our WSJ file. So this, you can think of this as an entry point to our, to our Django application. And that's a file that is that is here. So if you take a look at, at our project, you can see we have to do this API, then we have WSGI. So this is the file we want to point it to. So over here, we also tell Heroku to run our migrations every time it is deploying, also to collect static every time it is releasing our app. Okay, so now that we finished setting up our, our proc file, we need a way to have our project dependencies in one place such that Heroku can know which dependencies it needs to install before it can run our application. So over here, if we did a pip list, this should be able to show us all the dependencies we are using in our project. Now, these are the ones we want to tell Heroku about. Now, Heroku is going to be looking for a file called requirements.txt. So let's go ahead and create that file. Now we can create it using pip by running pip freeze. Then we call, we give it a name, requirements.txt. Now you can see we have a requirement txt file created and it has all our dependencies. So now that we have this, we can commit these ones to git. So git add everything, git commit minus m for the message. Then we can say added all files. Then I'm gonna push this. So I'm gonna do git push. So that's gonna go ahead and update our GitHub. So in Heroku, if we come back to Heroku the mic and we go to our settings, in the settings, we can be able to set up our environment variables. Remember how we moved our secret key to our .env? So we can now copy over our environment variables. So over here, we can bring this one in. And also, we can set up a value for it. So I'm going to copy this string here. And also make sure it is here. So when Heroku is running our application, it's going to look for this environment variable. And it's going to use that instead of basically leaving it in there, leaving it in the source code. So 
now if we go back to our deploy section i'm gonna refresh this page just so we get rid of this error so down here you can see that it's connected so i'm gonna go over here and trigger a, a deployment to the main branch so i'm gonna click deploy branch so you can see that we we have an error that's because it's looking for this module called psycho pg2 I was hoping we installed it, but it looks like we didn't. So if we go to our requirements txt over here and try to search for it, you can see that it's not there. Now, what I'm gonna do is install. So psychopg2 is a connector for. So psychopg2 is a connector for Python and uh, Postgres. Now that's what it's looking for. That's because Heroku by default gives you a, a Postgres database that you can use for the application. So. It needs this to be available now. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to install psychopg2 binary. So this does the same thing, but this is now the recommended way of installing that library. So once the installation is done, then we can go ahead and update our requirements file. So you can just do that by pip freeze again. So that's gonna go ahead and update it. So now that we are done here. Then we can go ahead and push again. So git add everything. Git commit minus m. You can say add psycho pg2. We can come back to Heroku and retry the deploy. So I'm gonna click deploy branch again. You can see that it runs our migrations just like we instructed it. In the release phase and when done you can see that the deployment the the app was successfully deployed and when we click on view it's gonna go ahead and open in a new tab and you can see that we have our application here notice that we don't have notice that we don't have our, our documentation that's because it is on slash swagger so if we do slash swagger and now you can see that we have our api fully documented and uh, we can share this url to anyone in the world so that's it. Those are the basics of how you can get your application up on Heroku. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will sure review them and I can get back to you if I have an answer for you. So thanks guys for watching. I will talk to you in the next series.